So why don't you tell us about the features that this camera has that no other cameras have in this class right now? Okay, so I think um, initially, obviously, the 6K function or 5.9K recording, 6K at 24 frames per second, 5.9K mm -hmm. at 30 frames per second, those are clearly class leading. Uh, 4K 60p internal recording would be class leading. Right. Um, all of those have 10, are 10 bit available, uh, 420 color. Um, having 10 bit internal recording in 422 color is also class leading in this category. We're going to have 180 frame per second VFR slow mo function, so mm -hmm. that's going to be class leading in this category. Uh, we're also adding native codecs. This is something I'm personally excited about because when we deal in slow-mo with the GH5, you don't get any sound recording and you don't mm. get any autofocus. And that, for single shooters, the autofocus tends to be something they want to be able to use at higher frame rates. Mm -hmm. And the audio, in particular, at like 48 frames per second for music videos, people like to be able to shoot at a 2x slow-mo and still have it sync okay so that it doesn't get too far off of delay. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is a native codex now. So it'll actually give you a native 48 frame codec internally, which mm -hmm. means you'll have to slow it down in post. You'll also get a native 100 frame for PAL regions and a native 120 frame so that it'll play back at 120 frames per second and then you can slow it down, you get autofocus, you get audio recording. And there's another application for this and that's in 1080 obviously, that's yeah. not in 4K for that 120. But um, people, kids are out there now doing Twitch and they're streaming their video game play and then they're recording themselves on a second camera and a lot of their video game plays at 120 frames per second. Oh yeah. But their camera is at like 30 frames per second and it got like this weird sort of a difference in the way it looks, right? Mm -hmm. So you could buy this camera as like the ultimate camera for <laughs> streaming your video game play as your second camera to shoot yourself, have it be a native 120 frame codec and then just edit your gaming with this video, put it up on YouTube, and YouTube supports 120 wow. streaming now. So you've got a lot of uses for that 120 outside of slow-mo with this camera. Uh, and then in terms of like delving deep into the kind of nitty gritty things it has that no one else does, you know, very few cameras offer shutter angle in this class, mm -hmm. uh, we offer that. We have waveform monitor, we have vector scope. And on the waveform monitor, you can change the size of it. So if you want it teeny tiny, or you want it to span the entire size of the screen, left to right, mm -hmm. you have that ability. A couple of interesting adaptations from the Vericam. So with the zebra patterns, you can actually show two zebras simultaneously. So if you want mm. almost over and overexposed, zebras move one way, zebras move the other way. I seem to remember way. that in the original Vericams, right? Yeah. And, That's but great. I, and then on top of that, you can actually set the value of the zebra to whatever value you want. Mm -hmm. So they have one for 42%, mm -hmm. which is where we want V-log exposed for mid-tones. Mm -hmm. So I put my 18 gray card on set, it shows me the zebras, that lets me know I'm at 42 IRE, or 42%, mm -hmm. and now I know my midtones are right. right. There's a spot metering function in the camera, so you have the ability to move a little box to the hottest spot in the image, and it'll tell you how many stops over you are mm -hmm. on that. You can move a box down to the right, and it'll tell you how many stops under you are there. So the camera will show you you have eight, st eight stops under, and you have 6.3 stops over. Mm -hmm. So now what I do is I can quickly set up an, out, an exterior shot, move that up onto the cloud, make sure my cloud is under six stops, mm -hmm. then set my 18 gray card out, move a light in a little bit. Now I know that I'm at 42 IRE and I've got all the dynamic range the sensor has available right. to it. You know, one of our gripes has been that, you know, the camera designers were not cinematographers, but I mean, you've got features in this thing here. You're starting to say things that, that we've thought about before, but never envisioned would be in cameras. Did you sit down with major cinematographers and go through every single thing in their wish list? Yeah, so the reality is is that when we developed the Vericam 35, that's when we did a tremendous amount of research with cinematographers. Um, a, a friend of mine who happens to be an engineer for our company, Takahiro Mitsua, um, who I call the godfather of the Vericam 35, he spent half a year in California just working with cinematographers and f asking them questions about what they wanted in a camera. And so because Taka has so much involvement on this project, he brought many of the most desirable features from the Vericam into this camera so that we have those cinematography tools in the product. So your two divisions of your company were not sort of battling for position, you were working together to make a, a complementary camera essentially? Yeah, I think that there's two different ways of looking at this, right? So you can either try to protect your sales in the cinema space by preventing features from going into a camera like this. Mm -hmm. Or what you can do is you can recognize that nobody's gonna stop shooting production cameras 
just mm -hmm. because this is almost as powerful as a production camera. Your talent has a certain expectation of the camera that you're going to use. The studio has a certain expectation. There's a certain level of professionalism that comes from using a pr proper production camera. And by the way, I don't know anybody that pines to shoot a major feature on a camera mm. like this. We lust to shoot on a Vericam or an Alexa or a Red. Well, they're built That's for the aspirational, yeah. right? That's where we're going. We don't believe we're gonna hurt any of our cinema camera business by making this a more powerful yeah. tool. You may in the end raise it because of, you have a complementary tool now, you know what I mean? Right, so. and, and I think, I, I feel our approach is better because ultimately it helps young filmmakers get the chance to experience that Vericam look mm -hmm. and get used to working with it in a workflow. And it gives them the tool that they know will work great when they make the investment in a Vericam or an right. EVA, or when they rent that EVA or Vericam for projects. They know this is going to match so well mm -hmm. with that camera. And, and ultimately, time will tell if we've made the right choice or our competitors are making the right choice. But I'm 100% I'm confident that filmmakers will appreciate the fact that we don't dumb down our cameras just to try to protect a higher end camera. Okay, well we've talked a lot about this, the camera, but right. let's take a look at a little of the video. Yeah, it'd be a good idea at this point. I mean, obviously that video is amazing. So how did you make it? Who made it? Yeah, so we work with a director of photography. His name is David C. Smith. Um, he's out of Los Angeles, California. Uh, he actually is the proprietor of Third Law Productions and uh, he's the founder of Driving Plates. So a lot of his work is actually doing backgrounds, green screen work uh, for major motion pictures, but clearly he's a very accomplished cinematographer as well. So why don't we go ahead and introduce him? Okay, David, are you there? Hey guys, how's it going? Good, how you doing? Doing all right, doing all right, thanks for asking. All right, I guess first question is, is what do you think of this camera? The S1H, uh, we had a, a couple of opportunities to shoot with it, both with the prototype and now with the production model. Uh, and I think it's one of the best cameras that Lumix, well, actually I think it is the best camera that Lumix has ever put out. And, and that's saying something, because I think uh, Panasonic has consistently raised the bar when it comes to video capable DSLRs and and that I think goes across the board. I've always uh, had a really good relationship with Panasonic. I've always been a very happy uh, user of their cameras both in the professional line and and within the Lumix family. Uh, honestly my entire company drivingplates.com uh, was formed on a, a Panasonic foundation. We've always used the GH line of cameras with everything we've shot and that's footage that's ended up in you know Academy Award winning Best Picture nominated films, all the way from uh, you know now hundreds and thousands of episodes of television. Uh, you know the the GH line has never let us down, and the S1H is it feels like uh, just a GH grown up a little bit. So very much a very capable cinema camera. 
uh, I would put it up against anything out there in its form factor, and I think it's actually hitting well above its weight as well. Uh, we, we really enjoyed it. It's a fantastic, fantastic rig. All right, what features are you more thrilled with that they put in this camera that they didn't have in the GH series, or even the Vericam series? Uh, well, one thing that was nice to feel, that, to see carried over, and that's working really well is the dual ISO capability. That That's a, fi a feature now that I would consider uh, a requirement for any camera I get moving forward. It, it really has changed the way I shoot. Um, but with this one, uh, over the GH series, obviously the full frame sensor is the big change. Uh, and typically I haven't been a full frame shooter in my career. I typically shoot more traditional, you know, cinema 35 sized frames. That's what I'm used to. And moving into the full frame, uh, the full frame sensor size, what I've started to notice is that I have more options. Um, even if I'm not trying to go for that incredibly shallow depth of field that is kind of the signature of full frame, what's nice is being able to make choices as I'm shooting between the full frame look or going back to a more traditional Cinema 35 look. So the options that the camera gives me is really the thing I'm finding most intriguing. And one of those options is anamorphic. Um, so having, having a really capable anamorphic mode in the S1H uh, has opened up a whole new possibility, a uh, host of possibilities, both for lens choices, uh, but specifically for the looks that we can achieve. Um, so that's why most of the piece that we just watched was shot anamorphic with the the Atlas lenses. And, and uh, it, it's a very simple process to to take the anamorphic footage into post. Really, it was a flawless experience from top to bottom. Even with the prototype camera, we had a flawless experience, which normally that's a place where you're going to you know fight some battles. And it, it loaded directly into Premiere. We were cutting straight on the timeline right away. Um, it was really, really a, a pleasant experience all around. So, so David, I know you're being kind, but there is one uh, thing that was not exactly flawless with the anamorphic modes. Okay. And that is that we didn't actually have the names for what the D squeezes were in the menu. It just said dummy for all the different options. So um, at, at the time, what we, we hadn't put all the names in. The camera will D squeeze uh, 1, 3, 1, 3, 3, 1, 5, 1, 8, or 2x anamorphic lenses but they didn't have time to put the names in for him to be able to do his work. So it just said dummy, 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 and that's all oh, okay. he had for it. Uh, and then we also, uh, we can stabilize anamorphic lenses, and we actually have a optimization in the stabilizer. So it'll stabilize 1.3s or 1.3.3s or 2x or 1.8, and that all said dummy too. So he was really flying yeah. blind on how to get all that stuff set up. So a lot of testing he probably had to do to make it all work the way it Well, it looked good. It, it looked great to me. Yeah, so I just wanted to give you a little behind the scenes. It's not always perfect like David makes it out.